This is Jakarta's longest rapid transit line. In short, lots of transit here, built by the private sector, lots of developers playing in real life city skylines here. This city of 120,000 gets nearly twice as many trains an hour compared to the city that has 18 times the population. Oh, and uh, trains are kinda slow here. This is Tanabang Station. Nearby is Tanabang Market, Southeast Asia's largest textile market, and there's also a textile museum across the river. Though it seems that the station itself has become a textile market. This station is the eastern terminus of the Rangkas Bitung Line, where it connects to the Chikarang Line. There are horror stories of this station being overcrowded at rush hour, but outside of peak hours, Duri Station is honestly worse. And unlike Duri, there's a lot of connections outside. Untrackable Transjakarta. <laughs> On the 13th of May 2024, Transjakarta finally got live bus tracking via Google Maps. Whoever made or contributed to this, thank you. Regional buses, check. Uncots of both the traditional and new micro trans types, check. Unfortunately, congestion here is pretty bad. So much so, I don't recommend using this station if you want to go to Sudirman Tamrin. Just get off at Palmera and take either the 1B or 1F, it's faster that way. This station used to be busier than Manggarai before the switchover, and back then, Green Line users can transfer here and get a direct train to Bogor. Also reminder that all KRL commuter line trains run on 1067mm tracks with 1500 volts DC overhead electrification, just in case you didn't watch the Bogor line video. Although this isn't the most frequent line with trains around every 10 to 20 minutes in the Tanah Abang Parung Panjang section and roughly every 15 to 30 minutes in the Parung Rangkas Bitung stretch, it does make up by generally being one of the most on-time lines in the system, based on my experience. Of course, that's when the line is working and someone did not throw a mattress onto the tracks. This line also has 6 different service patterns. Trains from Tanah Abang can stop in either Serpong, Parung Panjang, Tiga Raksa, and Rangkas Bitung. Though Parung Panjang and Rangkas Bitung bound trains are the most frequent. Meanwhile, trains from Rangkas Bitung can also stop short in Serpong or Parung Panjang. Speaking of trains, until very recently, this line is only served by the JR series trains, mostly JR 205s with the occasional 203 appearing. But since the end of last year, Tokyo Metro 6000s have been spotted here as well. Some of you also did point out that I skipped a few stations in that review. That is true. And to prevent further public outcry, I've decided to mention every station and I might make a video of me going to Chilabot station in the future. Palmera. Palmera is a somewhat large station despite only serving one line and they definitely need all that space because this station is also within an uncomfortable walking distance to several other major trip generators. Sanayan Park is a mall with a nice Instagrammable rooftop and a park. It's also way too small to handle visitors from the neighboring venue which is Gebeka, Gelora Bung Karno Sports Complex. If there's a match or concert there, just don't go here. Same thing if there's a demonstration because here lies the DPR MPR building aka the parliament. Not to mention that two major media companies being Compass and TVRE have offices here. Palmera also has a decent selection of bus lines such as the 8C providing local service, important considering the long stop spacing of this line, the 1B and 1F connecting this station to Sudirman and the 9E to Jelambar. Kebayoran is another large station connected to Transjakarta Corridor 8 and 13 with a very long sky bridge. There's also a lot of micro trans lines that I wish I knew before walking the 900 meters from Gandaria city while half the street is flooded. Anyway, if you need to regularly transfer between the Rangkas Bitung line and Corridor 13, you will be fit enough to climb Gunung Gede, because those 550 meters between Kebayoran and Railback stations also contain stairs at the end and slopes in the middle. Still better than walking down below though. Meanwhile, Corridor 8's Kebayoran shelter is actually one of the nicer bus shelters. It was recently renovated and it's very big. Kebayoran and the next station, Pondok Ranji, are also really far apart at 6 kilometers. The tracks also go right through Tanah Kusir Cemetery. This is also where some trees fell on a train not too long ago disrupting service in the whole line. Pondok Ranji has two exits. One of them connects to a bridge giving you views of the highway and then connects to a weather protected sidewalk. This sidewalk provides easy access to a bird park and Bintaro Plaza Mall, though I admit, getting from the platform to the lobby of that mall is a 1.2 km walk. Also, I think Pondok Ranji has the best looking station building in this line. Another station with multiple exits is Jurang Mangu. One exit goes outside to a small road with Angkot connections, the other one directly connects you to Bintaro Exchange Mall via this aesthetic tunnel that goes under a highway, and there's also a third exit going from Bangunan Jai University. Also, the name of this station is fitting as Jurang Mango means canyon, and this station is located in a very small canyon. Sudimara 
mainly a station surrounded by houses, there's a market nearby, and some Angkot connections. Congestion is pretty bad here due to this station being connected by a single narrow street that also has a level crossing. Rawabuntu. This station literally means dead at swamp. Overall, a decent station in terms of connectivity with multiple Angkot lines and a large arterial road above. Located above the station, so no level crossing here. Also good in terms of TOD, transit-oriented development, as currently an apartment is being built right next to the station. Now, getting to the station does involve a bit of a descent down. As I recall, there's a really steep staircase that connects this station to the arterial road above. Serapong, a large station with multiple platforms, completely surrounded by houses and has a market nearby. But no overpass for the road right next to it, meaning congestion here is pretty bad. Some trains stop here and turn back to Tanah Abang, meaning after the station, the frequency goes down a little bit, though still within the once every 10, sometimes 20 minute range. Alright, this is my home station so I have a lot to say. Chisok station is connected with a very nice but also very long 400 meter long skybridge to the intermodal market where there's also a bus terminal with pretty poor connections unfortunately. Yes, there is the local area shuttle bus that is based at Ling that did not show up multiple times in the past. Fortunately, they have mostly functional bus tracking now via the One Smile app. Use base the link to go to Aeon Mall. So due to the way they schedule their buses, there could be maybe 3 departures in the first 30 minutes and then no departure for the next 30 minutes. And I find the fact that there's no bus to Gading Serpong to be pretty offensive. Seriously, developers here have a really bad habit of building nice bus stops and nice terminals and then to proceed to not use or barely use them. What this station lacks in connections, it does make up with its nice modern stations, level boarding and transit oriented development with multiple apartment blocks behind the station. Although there's a level crossing nearby that has congestion problems, they did build a flyover to help ease the traffic situation there. Chichayur, a small station surrounded by a couple of villages and newly constructed housing. About a kilometer away lies the somewhat viral on Instagram mini zoo Jasmine Park. Nearby is the under construction Jatake station. Both of these stations will provide transit to the newest part of BSD. After this station, stop spacing widens while previously it was somewhere between 2 to 6 kilometers, now stations could be anywhere from 2 to 10 kilometers. Parong Panjang, a large station that's completely surrounded by houses and I do mean a lot considering how far we are from Jakarta at this point. And there's also a market nearby. A lot of trains from Tanah Abang terminate here and turn around, meaning beyond Parong Panjang, there's less frequent service. Chilajit and Daru. Now, most of these stations have platforms that are quite literally sliced in half, meaning if you're in the wrong car, you get no platform. Chilajit is one of those stations with this feature. When it comes to TOD, the southern side of the station has a village and Modern Line is currently having a city skyline session in the north. Same thing with Daru which serves a couple of villages, Tenjo and Tigaraksa. A viewer told me about Tenjo's short platform so I went there to check it out. Yep, it's very short indeed. Now, Tenjo and Tigaraksa serves Podomoro city skyline sessions in the form of Podomoro Tenjo. Between these two stations is the planned Tigaraksa Podomoro station. Some trains from Plana Abang also stop in Tigaraksa. Chikoya mainly serves a village and some smaller scale residential areas. Maja, the station that serves Chiputra City Skyline Session in the form of Chitra Maja Raya. Now, I'll admit from the station you don't really see that much, but trust me, there's a Chianjur sized construction zone behind this village. And then you get to Chitaras, which mainly serves a village, but admittedly, the view here is a bit less uh, pristine due to the numerous mines scattered throughout the area here. And finally, Rangkas Bitung, a terminus of the Rangkas Bitung line, transit here to the Merak local train, which will get you to the cities of Serang, Chilagon, and the port of Merak. And the fact that this city of 120,000 gets trains every 15 to 30 minutes even off-peak is pretty amazing. For reference, Tangrang, a city with over 2 million people, gets two trains an hour off-peak. So please note that riding the Merak local train requires buying a separate ticket and the schedule is pretty limited, let's just put it at that. Boarding in this station is also pretty interesting since you literally use parked trains to cross the tracks and into the other platforms. Besides that, this is your typical station with lots of houses surrounding it and a market nearby. Overall, this is a great line when it works, but there are some things to note. First of all, it has a rough history. The deadliest train crash in Indonesian history happened here in 1987, claiming the lives of 139 people. That was before the reforms. This line is also overloaded during rush hour, so much so that there's a market for premium buses for people who do not want to get squished 5 times a week. And even on Sunday mornings, it can get packed. Feeder services to some residential areas nearby tend to not be the best. It either doesn't exist, like to my place, and when it does exist, the frequency is 
awful.